Why, hello, everyone. Welcome to Jolene's Happy Time Craftcast. I am so excited if you are able to join me live today. And if you're listening later on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast, that too is awesome. So it's a beautiful day here in Minnesota. And I am very, very excited to talk to today's guest. Um, and as I give you this introduction, I just want you to understand that when you think about women who are amazing and who are doing amazing things, today's guest falls into that category. Her name is Suzanne Early, and she is the editor and publisher of Strawberry Moon Magazine. And Strawberry Moon Magazine focuses on art journaling. And if you're not familiar with the magic of art journaling, today is going to be a really great episode for you to listen to. I've been an art journaler for a long time. And for someone like me who makes projects that sometimes take a very long time, I love to art journal because it is immediate. And I can do something and I don't need to worry so much about if it can hang on a wall or if it's perfect. It really is a form of artistic and creative expression. And today's guest, Suzanne, she demonstrates the magic of art journaling in every issue. She's an artist herself. She's a recent grandma. She's been a long arm quilter. She's been a school secretary. And now she finds herself as the editor and publisher of this magazine. So I know you will do me proud and welcome <laughs> Suzanne to the Happy Time Craftcast. Hi, Suzanne. Hi, thanks for having me here today. It's exciting. Well, well, thank you so much for being my guest. I have so many questions for you. So I'm going to do my best not to just like fire and pepper them at you, but like give okay. you a chance to actually answer. Sounds so, good. Did you ever in your life think that you would be an editor and publisher of a magazine? And oh, while absolutely. you're answering that, let me just, I'm going to hold one of them up for everyone to see. Like, they're beautiful. The covers feel amazing. The inside is amazing. And, you know, I've been in here once myself and I keep these on my coffee table for people to look at. Like, this is such a beautiful publication. Thank you. First of all, I am really, really proud of it. I you should um, be. I I set out with some really specific goals about what it, I wanted it to be like. Yeah. Um, but but no, I mean, why why would have I have ever thought of that? And and you know, when people ask me, well, how did you learn to do that? And I, or or how you know, do you have a publishing background? And I'm like, well, mm -hmm. no, I just feel like. I was the right person at the right time to do this. I had the interest and the skills to figure it out. Right. Um, I, I was a music major and then I switched to computers. And so I've been a computer person my whole life. Mm. Um, and so learning the software was easy for me. I, mm. I always, I always joke that my brain must work the way programmers brains work because figuring out software figuring out a website is always very natural to me it's like I know where I'm supposed to look right um, I know where I'm supposed to click or or I know how to use Google and I'm not afraid to use Google um, well, the thing about the magazine that gets me every single time is just how colorful and vibrant it is and how the exterior of the magazine is like this lush velvet feel. Isn't that great? It's amazing. So, so the printer, so I got a sample from the printer I use of all of their papers and I, you know, you can touch and feel. And mm -hmm. I, my husband was the one who was like, Oh, I like that. One. <laughs> I can see why he did that. I do it too. I'm just like, Oh like, my God. Oh, I love it. It's called <laughs> soft touch lamination. I haven't, you know, I don't know what that means exactly, but Oh. Again, I love it so much. I feel like I could have a t-shirt that says, I love <laughs> soft touch laminated paper. Yes. Like It's just so beautiful. And I think another thing that's important to describe about your magazine is that this isn't ephemera. This isn't like read it and recycle it. Oh, this, no. This is read it and treasure it. So yes. like magazine to me kind of implies that we're going to use it and dispose of it. But this is like you treasure these and you keep them on your coffee table or in your, in your studio. Right. It's really, I mean, it's, I, I call it a magazine because to me, it's a, 
a publication that's going to come out on a regular mm -hmm. basis. Mm -hmm. But really, the finished product is really more of a book. It's a, oh, gosh, it's a yes. soft cover book. Um, I very purposely chose um, a heavier quality of paper. And, and I chose the uncoated paper because we do occasionally put some ephemera in and I wanted right. to be able to use I've it. I've never cut it out because I'm just like, I don't want to ruin my book, but I but can. the beauty is that I also give it to you so you can print it. Right, exactly, exactly. So. It's an amazing work. It's absolutely amazing. Well, thank you. But I, I have to say, yes. you know, you mentioned how colorful it is and everything. That's not me. That is the artists. That is the people who have gone into this. And I, I have not kept count recently. Um, but after like the first three issues, I think I was at about 100 different artists. And I think I have approached at least 175 with this issue now. Just new people who keep finding me, who keep trusting me to share their work. And so all of the color and the beauty um, is really coming from them and I'm just that conduit to get it to everybody else. So well I have been that one of those 175 artists <laughs> um in issue six and issue seven. Yes. Yeah. And um I keep these issues on the coffee table here at our retreat center. And I have little flags on them where I'm like, I'm in there. I'm in there. <laughs> I'm like so excited. Yeah. And I've shared it, you know, on social media like I am so proud to be an artist who's in it. Like it is just an incredible publication. So, so where can, like, if people are like, okay, you two, this sounds awesome. <laughs> where, where can I find it? Where should they go? So they can go to my website, which is um, strawberrymoon.art. And then you can click on the shop tab. And um, we I just today opened up pre-orders for issue seven. So that's under current mm -hmm. issue. And then I do have back issues available of mm -hmm. um, two, three, four, and six. I have sold out of one and five. Okay. Um, and I do often have people ask me about reprints. And I just... The, I can't afford to do reprints very sure. often. Um, it's just a it's it's um they're expensive and so oh, yeah i mean oh like gosh. you said it is it is a book and you know there are other artsy magazines out there and one of the reasons why strawberry moon is my one of my favorites oh it is my favorite is <laughs> because i love how artists share process Yes. and inspiration. And, you know, my good friend, Molly Anthony has been in the magazine mm -hmm. a number of times and Molly is so good about sharing her why. Yes. So I love that the magazine incorporates not just the how to, but also the inspiration, the method, the madness, like all of it's there. And then when it arrives in the mail, I just, I love going through every single page. I, I just can't say enough about how much I love what you've created. I'm, I'm probably turning bright red. So I appreciate <laughs> your kind words. And, and, and it's so, it's so exciting to me to hear you say that because mm. that is what I wanted. And that's the kind of thing where you're talking about the whys. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted to be able to do is because I really believe everybody has a story. And I know lots of people say that everybody mm -hmm. has a story, but we don't always get to tell our stories. Um, right. And so I find that when I'm sharing my artwork on Instagram, I'm almost more interested in the caption, mm -hmm. typing out and telling you what I was thinking, what I was doing, why I created it, than I am the actual showing you the artwork. I want to tell you the story. And mm -hmm. so being able to um, facilitate all these people telling those stories has been, it, it, that was that was one of my big goals. Um, well, and don't you find it interesting? I'm so sorry I interrupted, but oh, you're fine. Um, don't you find it interesting? I know you and I are both empty nesters. Yes. And this, like for me, this phase of my vocation is only because I am an empty nester that I am able to do the things that I do now. I, I don't think I could have run a retreat center or you know, had an online, you know, community or, sure. you know, done my artwork for others when I was running the hockey tournaments and making sure, you know, everybody remembered their volleyball bag and right. those kinds of things. So do you think that this is all possible now too, because of where you are in life? 
so I, so I had a long arm machine quilting business while my kids were young Mm -hmm. and I, so I, I don't know that this is necessarily, I'm able to do it because my empty nest, because I was Mm -hmm. able to do that creative business with them around. It was a different creative business. Right. Um, and I also was blessed with twin, twin boys who did the same events. So nice. we were, yes. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> so we were always, it, it was, I was probably not as busy as it sounds like you were when they were teens. We have four, we have four and there was a year where we had three different schools. Oh my God. I was just like, oh my gosh. Like yeah. I just lived in my car. <laughs> yes. Yes. So we, I mean, I spent a lot of time in my car. Yeah. But yeah. I was always going to one event or, you know, we, we weren't having to do the right. divide and conquer kind of stuff. So <laughs> bless those boys for yeah. having the same interests. I yes, love that. Exactly. Well, speaking of boys, so, so there's something that, so Something that you have said is that, you know, you can't wait until your grandson is able to hold a color crayon yes. and not put it in his mouth so that you can make art together. Yes. And my question for you is, I was just recently reading an article about how our language matters when we talk about crafting mm, and yes. in a number of ways. One, like there is kind of this old school language where don't tell my husband I'm crafting and not, you know, doing what I was supposed to be doing. Or um, we don't encourage the young men in our life to be as crafty as we encourage the young women in our life. And so for me, what like came up for me is that I was doing a macrame project with my kids and my son, Charlie, was whipping through it when I was like, you know, this is a lark's head knot. And he was like, mom, I'm not stupid. I know what a lark's head knot is. And I was just like, you do? Like how, what? Like I, huh? I wouldn't teach you how to do that. So I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about how you feel about like the language around crafting and the way that we position it in our lives as, because I know you've also said that it's really important to you to be a maker and creator. Like if you're not, you feel like something's missing. Right, right. You know, and I I think it's, I have lots of thoughts, of course. Um, Because part of what happens is, you know, you talk about, well, don't tell my husband. So there's that language, there's that language we use for ourselves. Right. About... Oh, it's just, it's just, you know, and I'm like, no, it's not just. I say that. I say it's just, I can stop that. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, I try to be very careful about not doing the it's just. Mm -hmm. And luckily I have a husband who's very supportive of it. I grew up with a mom who was cross-stitching and doing all of the crafts. So it was natural to me. Mm -hmm. Um, And so then when I started quilting and cross-stitching, my husband doesn't understand. Um, You know, he, Mm -hmm. he, I think sometimes thinks, and and bless him, I'm not trying to complain about him. I sometimes think he, let me get those words in the right order. (laughs) He thinks that I should be monetizing more of what I do. Oh, sure. Yeah, But, But that's just, I think some of that is that we don't know how to talk about Mm-hmm. I need to do this just for me. Like, yeah. like like knitting. I knit a lot, but I refuse to knit for anybody but myself. Right. And my grandson. Right. Um, he's, he's exempt from this rule. He's yes. exempt from that. Yes. Um, because it just it just takes too much time. You cannot no. pay me enough. Um, and and quilting. I was a very prolific quilter, but I almost never sold quilts. I did one yeah. commission quilt project and I charged for it because yeah. I had to. Um, but I would rather give you a quilt than sell you a quilt. Right. Because it's a different, very different, very different expression of who I am and um my love for you. If if you're quilt worthy, you know, you're in. <laughs> Um, but I I am, like there's a whole segment of our folks who get that. Yes. 
<laughs> that was such a good reference. Oh my God. Look, I will Whoa. give you clues if you don't know that was a Seinfeld reference, but it was so, so good. I love oh. it. I'm going to use that. My, mine might not be quilt worthy. It might be like, you know, folded piece of paper worthy. Or oh, right, other. right. I mean, but you know, you can replace quilt worthy with whatever, but. That's um, awesome. But mm -hmm. I do, you know, even when I was long on quilting, we had a lot of conversations about are we artists? Are we just yeah. crafters? And what's the just. difference? Mm -hmm. Just, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, um, and then I see, even now I see talk, people talking about, are you a real artist? I'm like, did you, did you put paint on a piece of paper? Right. What, what, how, how it is, or, or whatever, what do you mean by real? And, uh, you know, right. I would hear that about quilting too. Well, it's not a real quilt unless you hand quilted it. I'm like, so it's a fake quilt? What is it? I just don't understand that that mindset either. Um, I think then, it's interesting in this community of artists and crafters that, you know, because I think about this a lot too, like the conversation between art and craft and, and, and who's doing it. And I'm starting to think that nobody on the outside is doing it as much as I'm doing it on the inside. Oh, sure. Right? And I yeah. think that when, like, the people who say that, because, you know, like, it happens to me on social media where I'll post a project and somebody will go, art. Right. <laughs> like, in air quotes, you know. And I think that if on the inside I know like, I'm so happy with what I make and I'm so right. happy being a maker that I think that if all of us artists, makers, and crafters just decide, like, let's just maybe decide right. that, that is no longer a thing. Well, then we it got often, water off a duck's back, you know? It it often, and I tell the, the young people in my life all the time this, what they say reflects more on them than it does on you. Exactly. exactly. You know, if they have a problem with it, then that's their problem. You've got to stand strong in what you know and, um, but yes, oh, I agree about the internal. It's always more of an internal, internal in our heads, but also within our communities, we're the ones that are arguing with each other. Exactly. Why? exactly. We're all trying to do the same thing. But I think it goes back to the, well, if you're doing it that way and I'm doing it this way, mm -hmm. does that make me wrong? Yeah. It's just different. And Exactly. So and that's a whole big wider like I know, right? conversation so just, about everything that takes us down a wormhole of sorts. Yes, then. yes. Um, so in our comments, we do we have a question that okay. um, I would love for you to because I get asked this question too. And so when people are like, okay, so you do this amazing magazine called Strawberry Moon Magazine, and it's about art journaling. Mm -hmm. What the heck is art journaling? So to me, my definition of art journaling is, did you make your art in a book or using parts of a book? Nice. And to me, anything that fits into that is probably art journaling. And so even if that means um, the, the, the size of the book doesn't matter. Right. You know, it could be teeny tiny or it could be giant. Mm -hmm. It could be an accordion. It could be three sheets of paper stapled together. Um, it could be a zine where you fold it. Right, or right. I love zine. Down. Um, it could be a junk journal. It could be your sketchbook. It could be if it's if you call it a book, and mm -hmm. I trust you to make the decision that it's a book. You know, right, right. To me, that's what an art what art journaling is. And so I know what people like. I'll see a distinction between junk journaling and sketchbooking and art journaling. Mm -hmm. and like, to me, those are all art journaling. Yes, I agree with you totally. I so, also like when I describe it, I like to include that, um, like for me, I let go of my wall worthiness. Like, oh, yes, definitely. Right? Like, I'm, I'm not going to hang it on a wall. It, this isn't for, like, I can let go of perfection. I can mm -hmm. be a little bit more breezy and creative. I use the words, this is just a warm up, you know, so that I can just kind of practice and play with my tools and my supplies. Right. Um, I also like to incorporate I just love um, collage and especially absurd collage. Mm -hmm. So, you know, part of that is in there as well for me. Sure. Um, I just love that art journaling 
doesn't have any rules. So if you're with us today and you're in the comments, what are your favorite things about art journaling? Um, Suzanne and I would just love to know because I just, I love it. H how do you feel about it? Suzanne, how do you feel about oh, it? No, how do, I'm sorry, <laughs> I thought you lost track of what would I <laughs> like and how often do you do it? So so it depends. That's one of those. It depends kind of conversations. Um some days I will some sometimes a year I will just that's all I'll do is I'll be in my art journals. Yeah. Sometimes of year, like right now, I wouldn't call anything I've done. Well, no, that's not true. <laughs> See, it depends. Yeah. I'm doing very little art journaling right now because I am so focused on working on the magazine. And so right. all of my creative energy is going to that. Yeah. Um, and so that's why the create the creativity, the crafting I'm doing right now is mostly knitting um, or embroidery. Sure. Um, so, but I am, I do have a I started a new habit this year called my illustrated weekly illustrated weekly journal. Nice. And so that's a single spread for the entire week. And that is like the only thing I've been really consistent about this year so far. I bet. So my friend Deborah is in the comments and I bet she would like that. Deborah is an art journaler. She's been to a couple of retreats here at Big Raven Farm. And she's and got an article in a magazine too. Oh. So oh. yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Is it about birds? She it's, loves birds. And she yes. Loves birds. Yes. About birds. It's about birds. Oh, I totally get That's so great. I'm yes. so excited. She is a good person to know. I love her. So, so. <laughs> oh, and she's here in the comments. So yes. Hi. <laughs> That's awesome. So in the art journaling or in just another space, do you have like currently, and it might jump because I know it jumps for me. Do you have like a favorite project medium or technique? Like, is there something where you're just like, Oh, I can't wait to do more of that. I, I love lettering. Right. Isn't that kind of how you got yes, your start? So I got my start with, um, what I would call like paper arts. Sure. Um, I really wanted to letter. I wanted to learn mm -hmm. calligraphy and, um, I've never really learned it to the extent that I meant to, because I kind of got off track, but with learning all kinds of other things. Right. Um, but, um, I'm always wanting to add letters to my page and um, I kind of go through cycles of right now. I, you know, like, well, not right now, but um, at some points it'll be like, I do a lot with acrylics yeah. and then I'll get tired of the acrylic paint and I'll put it away. Um, watercolor is always really present for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I do a lot with that, but, but I'm always trying to letter. I'm always trying to put words on the page, whether it's my own or finding quotes. And I'm currently taking two different lettering classes <laughs> online nice. um, where we're examining different letter forms and trying to figure out how to how did they create that letter with the, right. you know, the little curly cues and then how to apply that to our own work? Um, That's awesome. I recently had a lettering guest on Christy Daughtry was on, if you are familiar with her and she has a couple of courses, one for procreate. Oh um, yeah. If you'd like to learn it digitally and then another one for like pen and brush stroking. Um, because I, as I was telling Christy on that episode is I have bought all the lettering books Yes. Um, but somehow it didn't jump from the purchase of the book into my brain. I'm just like, I bought the dang book. Like, why can't I do it now? Well, so, my my <laughs> biggest tip for lettering is not to think of it as writing, mm. but to think of it as drawing. Right. That's a good way to do it. You are, you're, when you're, when you're trying to letter, you have to almost forget that it's a letter. You mm -hmm. have to just think about the shape. And if you can focus on the shape more than you focus on, um, which, which gets you in trouble then, because then you start misspelling words, but right. um, I mean, I, it's kind of like, I, I like to say often with my art journal, it's like, the spirit of the law and not the letter of the law. Yes, yes. I can just be quite a bit more playful in that space. So I know you're very busy getting this 
issue of the magazine out and mm-hmm. that your creative energy is going there. Yes. Um, but is there anything on your work table, like a project that you just can't wait to get back to, or, you know, something that's been calling you like, Suzanne, come on. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so I, my work table, you can kind of see behind me is lovely two, two six foot long tables that are, um, I work in a, like a 12 inch square space. And yes, so the rest of it's full. I get it. The rest of it's full with all. <laughs> the so I have just a bunch of different things going and, um, and, and, and I actually forgot to go grab my knitting project. I am knitting a bear. And oh, so nice. that's one thing I'm really interested in right now. Um, the other thing that is that I'm working on is an embroidery project. Oh my goodness. So, so this is obviously, whoops, there's the camera. It does not have any embroidery on it yet. Um, it's a stitch along project from uh, Lolly and Grace called oh, Castle in the Sky. Cool. And, and so the really interesting thing about this is that this was white fabric and I used Tombow markers. No, you didn't. Yes. Oh my God, that's so that cool. Tombow markers. So you you color on it and yeah. then you spray it with water. And the really interesting thing is that the blue moves like nothing. Sure. The pink is, you have to be really careful with it because it's it doesn't so saturate. Yeah. It's so saturated. So, and so then the next step is to hand dye some of the thread that we're going to use. So she, I, I actually have some other kits from her and, and it came with Tombow markers and I'm like, Tombow markers to die. Are you kidding me? How clever is this? I love that because I mean, I have them, Yes, right? Like I have everything and, uh, (laughs) and it's fun to find a new use for like a staple. And um, so, so I these are that. not washable any longer. You can't right. get it wet because the dye will come Goodbye. out. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, she has instructions for where, how we're going to hand dye some of the yarn or the, what? the embroidery. The floss. Floss. Yeah. What and, an exciting project to get to. I'd be yeah. excited about that too. Well, and I've had the kit for a month and she, the stitch along just started. So I'm oh, really excited fun. about it. But then I, I also. That. The other thing that I'll show you real quick is yeah, please. Um, this is my um, weekly spread for last week. Wow. There's a grandson on there. That's so grandson. cute. So each week has been something different. And then there was one week where I just, I didn't do anything until the, like the very end. So all I did was pictures of him. Oh, He's oh, very cute. Oh, he is so cute. <laughs> he is six months old, but he's like in size nine and 12 month stuff. And it's just crazy. How so fun. We've, we've done, I've done a bunch of different ways of, and so right, so right you- now the, the, the kind of focus on, in my art journaling that I am doing mm-hmm, is more mm-hmm. illustration. I'm yeah. really um, wondering about, or, or playing with illustrating and really working on my drawing skills. Cause I'm one of those people that I thought you had to be able to draw to be an artist. Did like, you know, no, I say that, I say that exact thing. Like if you and I, like if we are going to play Pictionary, and everybody's like picking partners. Nobody will want me because I am a terrible drawer. I'm a great guesser, but I'm yeah. a terrible, terrible drawer, which seems so inconsistent with being an artist. But, but I was no- just like you. Like I didn't think I could call myself an artist right. because I can't draw a cat. Or, or well, and and I think the thing that finally I finally figured out was one, a lot of the people who are artists that can draw. Well, first of all, they didn't start out being able to draw like right. That. I thought they just sat down and did it. I <laughs> too. It turns out most of them use um, reference images, right? Or they practice? Or they practice? <laughs> Darn it! It's kind of like I bought the book. Why didn't why, we just why does it just in my head? <laughs> so, so I see Deborah has a question about the Tombow oh, markers. Question. Let's find it. And it says, uh, might come on your hands while working with the cloth. And they absolutely do. And so in the instructions, Anne does recommend using plastic gloves. Oh, sure. 
so that because and it is washable but i mean i've gotten tombow on and then had tombow marker on my hands for three days right exactly stains but yeah well, she, like, like washing an embroidered project isn't like a normal behavior anyway right no no yeah. you just have to be careful that you're not that you don't right but and you know some people like to um like some cross stitch projects i would um soak like yeah. when I was done, I would soak it and then yeah. I would press it. So you can't do that with, with this right. thing. But. Or I suppose too, if you use like my friend Hannah um, from Sherwood Forest Creations, she uses um, heat erasable ink to yeah. get the pattern there. Yeah. So we wouldn't want to combine these two techniques um, because you would lose the tie dye from the Tombow. Well, you, but you can still use the heat on it. But you can't use the what? No, no, the water one. The oh, water, water soluble. Yes, no, the you water can erasable. Use the water thing. erasable. Yeah, but yeah, you can use. But then, yeah, she does. So, so in this particular project, um, I bought the pre-printed panel, but yeah. she also has instructions for using the heat erasable. Yep. It sounds like a great project. I would be excited about it too. And yeah. So what's on my work table? Yes. If you've been following along on the pod, you know that I've been talking for months about my, I will not curse, <laughs> <laughs> my blessed money roll project. I am still working on that beast. It is, to remind you all, it is 42 by 42 square. So it's huge. It is bigger than a than a dinner table. It is ginormous. And I have chopped off just the gold gilded edges of old books and I've made them into paper coils. And then all the coils go into the frame and I just have this beautiful, nummy, textured piece. Mm. And I thought I had enough gold edges and I ran out. So I'm going to the dump. <laughs> To see if I can't find some more gold edges. Um, because I have about I would say one quarter of that project left to do. And you know, the thing that I'm just starting to embrace, and I think you've actually talked about this somewhere too, that multiple projects, it used to embarrass me to have so many things going at one time. But you know what? I'm happier. I'm yeah. just happier when I can dabble in this space and then jump over and dabble and dabble and dabble. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to give myself the grace to know that I'm a project jumper. Yeah. Because, and I, I jump, I cycle and mm -hmm. I know that my interest will come back. Yeah, me too. For whatever too. reason, I'll go, oh, hey, I haven't knit in like three months. Yeah. Let me pick that up. Yeah, exactly. So, well, and so as I've been jumping from my money roll project, my other new project is what I like to call fancy sneezes. Fancy, so sneezes. Cool. <laughs> fancy sneezes is um, a tissue box from Michael's. And I covered it with book board oh, um, because all of these books that I'm taking the gold edges off, I keep oh, the sure. covers. Um, many of you know, I have tiled a wall with my book board tiles that I cut down into two inches square. And then I had some left. And so I covered these Kleenex boxes. I mean, if you can see here in my retreat center, I'm on brand, like it all, <laughs> it all matches. <laughs> So I know you might not have, you know, book board tile in your equipment arsenal, um, but, you know, my bandsaw is my my most important tool. I wouldn't yeah. be able to do a lot of the things I do without it. And for me, I just love making new stuff out of old stuff. It It is the happiest I can be as an artist. That's awesome. I recently saw, I just, I'm looking at your, cause those are actually the whole books in the fireplace, yeah. right? In the fireplace, yeah. So I actually saw a video of a group of people who, who slice off the spine. Yeah. With a guillotine cutter. With a guillotine cutter. Mm -hmm. And then they take the spines and line and they them build up. Stuff. Yes. And build stuff. I just, yeah, that's. About 15 of my friends have sent me the link to yeah. that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I love it. I have been looking. So I keep my eye on um, KBID here in Minnesota. If you are not familiar, it's K-B-I-D. It's like my favorite resource for um, auctions. Oh, and they okay. do a lot of commercial and business auctions as well as residential. Mm. And 
every now and again, like one, two times now, I saw an old fashioned book press oh, with the wheel, you know? Yeah. Um, and then I've seen, you know, printing businesses selling silk screen screens and all kinds of stuff. So I have a Google alert set for a guillotine paper cutter because boy, would I love one of those yeah. so much. But they're like, a new one is like, Three to six thousand. Oh, troopers. Yeah, right. So, Yikes. so my I'm manifest that and put that on my vision board. On your vision board. <laughs> yeah, my my book love is um, little golden books. Oh yeah, I love m- many of my journals now are made out of little golden books, and I have a I have a shelf. <laughs> however wide of golden books that are kind of waiting, and my sister lives in New Jersey and she spent time at a couple of the thrift stores there. Yeah. She finds them for me. Yeah. I love that. I love that so much. Well, and okay. So speaking of your little projects, you have like, I just don't know how did you, how'd you get to be so awesome? Because what you have prepared for our listeners is a golden reference. Can you tell them a little bit about it? So, so Suzanne's prepared a download for all of you. It'll be available in our show notes, but I cannot wait to even use it. So tell them, tell them more about it. So in the, in that download that I include in that download, I included um, two of the articles that I have written for past issues. So the first one is all about black waterproof pens. And the second one is about mark making. And so I kind of, in some ways, kind of thought those went together because you're going to use your black pens for the mark making. But the black pen one, I literally pulled out every single black pen I owned at how the time. How many was it? Like how many was it? It was, I don't even remember. I, it was a ridiculous number, I right? I don't remember. It was ridiculous because it wasn't it's just. Triple digits. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't just, oh, I have a micron pen. I have five Mm -hmm. different sizes of micron pens, you know? So, so then I'm like, okay, let's, let's narrow this down. So I narrowed it down to black waterproof pens that you would consider like drawing pens. So it does not even include brush pens, which was a whole, I mean, there's like an amazing resource. When I was looking through it, I was like, I cannot believe this is just, I mean, I know these things, but I forget and I forget which one does what. Right. I just love this reference. This was so generous of you to create. Thank well, you. Well, I I thought, you know, I don't really have a project, but I can share with you some of the things, some of the research I've done. And so in that download, there's actually um, a picture of every single one of the pens that I used for the thing and um, some sample writing. And then I also, at the time, um, it was it was current as of the time of the magazine, which was like two years ago now. Um, have the approximate retail price of those okay. pens, um, and of course, since then I have acquired you know like ten more different pens. So right. it's one of those resources I can always update. And then the second article that I included um, is from issue three, and issue three was all about um, activism and art journaling. And um, so as I was thinking of w- w- what I do for this issue, I thought, well, making your mark. And mm-hmm. so um, so I went through because I am always I've been art journaling since like 2018 or something. And I will pick up a pen and I'll OK, what what kind of marks do I like to make? And so this was like a reference and an idea of what can you make? But I also included some of my favorite quotes about making your mark on the world. Um, and I don't know if you know the book, um, The Dot by Peter H. Reynolds. Yes. And and that's actually the poster that's right behind me. Yeah. And in his one of the famous quotes from that is um, make a mark and see where it takes you. And I. I have a special place in my heart for that book and that story because, um, and I'm going a little off tangent, but it's really special for me. Um, I, this, I was a school secretary at, um, in, uh, and there was like 300 kids, no, 500 kids total in our school. So very small school. Yeah. And, um, our music teacher, Mr. Terry Shea, became friends with Peter Reynolds and worked with him at his company called Fable Vision. Um, and Terry, back in, I think it was 2009, 2009? That doesn't sound right. It doesn't really matter. Um, <laughs> I let you just get there. You're good. 
Um, he, I think it's actually in that article, actually. Okay. Kind of telling the story of what's in the art, some of what's in the article. But anyway, he decided, he and his fourth graders and the guidance counselor decided to celebrate Dot Day on September 11th because it was the publication mm -hmm. of the book, The Dot. Right. And, and it was um, a celebration of creativity. And so every year we have continued to celebrate that holiday, right. holiday yeah. um, to the point where last year, and I, I could look this up, but it was like 18 million people were celebrating Dot Day together this past year. And mm -hmm. shortly after this year's Dot Day, um, so Terry retired last year. He finally, after 39 years right. of whatever, um, he retired and he was going to be, he called it a school visit dot connect connector. He was going to represent artists um, and read books, artists and authors um, making school visits. Yeah. And he um, unexpectedly passed away this fall. Aww. So, um, so anytime I can talk about the dot and about Terry, because he made his mark on the world right. and on creativity and, and his inspiration is, you know, part of what I do too. Well, I think that, I mean, first of all, my condolences, because it sounds like he was a very special person. He was a special he friend, yes. And lots of people. Yes. Um, and then the other thing from what you just shared that is kind of like a wah, wah, gone off for me, Suzanne, you started art journaling in 2018? I think so. Okay, okay, okay. It just turned 2024, and you are the editor and publisher of an art journaling magazine. So when I said... I'm so excited to introduce you to remarkable women. I wasn't pulling your leg. Like that's amazing. Like, like I just am flabbergasted by that. Like you can count on one hand how long that's been. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you. it just like I said, I was in the right place at the right time. Well, I you don't followed know. Followed a vision and you followed a passion and like. Well, and I have because you just Suzanne, you just you just it just did you just did. I did just did. You I, did. You did. I, I, I do have to give credit. Uh, so I am very proud of what I've done. That's amazing. It is a big thing, and I totally, totally agree with that. I do have to give credit. Um because there there was a um an art journaling magazine called brush magazine mm -hmm. that kind of grew out of the get messy art journaling community oh yeah yeah and um the editor of that she was very very busy and ended up deciding that she was not able to continue publishing mm -hmm. her publication and at the time it was right about the time i had decided hey i think that i could submit to her right and then it went, and then it went away and so as I was looking at my transition out of working at school, because I was there through the end of the pandemic. Yeah. I, so I was there in March of 2020. And then I stayed the next year. And I'm like, what am I going to do next? And I kept having this idea that there still needed to be a publication for art journalers. Knowing that there is, Stampington produces Art Journaling Magazine. And it is a beautiful publication. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't even really consider it to be my competition because no. I feel like I'm in a completely different space than they are. Oh, definitely. Um, I, I kept thinking and thinking and thinking, and I'm like, well, why not? And my husband said, okay, <laughs> you know. And and I, I do recognize I do come from a very privileged place. In, in order to be able to do that. Um, he works very hard as a mechanical engineer and he farms. Um, so I, we're, it's springtime here in Iowa. So I will probably see him awake for about 30 minutes a day for the next six weeks. Right. Um, but, you know, it, like I said, it is a very big place of privilege. But um, if I can do this and provide that um, permanent place for people, some people's art to live. I, I get lots of emails from my artists and authors thanking me. Mm -hmm. And I, I know that, I don't know, it's such a weird, weird thing for me to talk about because what I want to do is I want them to be able to point to it as I, I was in that. I do. We do. That. We, we do. And, we do. and, 
And mission. if I do that, what what else could I do? Well, mission accomplished there. Like as an artist who's been in it, I'm so proud that I'm in it. I love telling people. And I think that I stand by my statement that you have created something so amazing. And I'm so, so proud to be a part of it. And in fact, here in our comments, Terry says, Suzanne, you are totally inspiring me to get out all my Strawberry Moon magazines. And yes, I have them all. Oh, that's so, awesome, Terry. Isn't that, <laughs> you know, so I mean, you're doing something so great. And I hope that as as you tell people about it, that there'll be this, this little little chirpy bird on your shoulder saying, don't use the word just. Yes. Because, <laughs> yes. But I, and it's so hard not to. I know. But, I know. Um, I know. But yeah, it's, I, it's a beautiful magazine. And um, I love being a part of it. And I love telling people about it. And I think you've done an incredible job. And now you're not going to believe that we are. We only have a few minutes left. Oh, time, my goodness. I know. Time goes so fast. <laughs> So a couple of things I do need to tell folks about, I want to let you know that um, our retreats at Big Raven Farm have been posted for all of 2024 and they're selling they're, and they're going to sell out. So if you are interested in coming to a retreat, we have Art for Self-Care. That's an art journaling retreat that is in October. We have several pick your own projects where you will pick from a list of my projects. Usually you can get done three, maybe four, depending upon how you work through things. Um, and all of those are listed on our website, bigravenyoga.com. Um, and then we've got another cooking retreat. Um, our executive chef has been doing a great job with those. So um, if you'd like to come to a cooking retreat with either yourself or some friends, we have a few spots left in that one. Um, so yeah, make sure you take a look at BigRavenFarm.com uh, and all of them for 2024 are listed. Or if you want to have your own retreat here, that's a possibility as well. And of course, if you'd like to join my craft club, um, I'd love to have you. There's just so many wonderful things going on and um, you can find all of that information in our show notes and of course on our website. So now to one of my favorite features or segments of the Happy Time Craft Cast. <laughs> Suzanne, are you ready? Oh, I, have, my. I have 10 questions for you and I ask all of our guests these same 10 questions. You can elaborate or you can just give me one word answers. It's completely okay. up to you. But here's your first one. It's easy. What is your favorite word? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have framed it as it's so easy. I like put pressure on you. I apologize. You know, I, I'm going to go with rainbow, actually. Oh, there's nothing wrong. I love that word. Yes. And and I have learned, I'm 50, I'm going to be 52. And I have been embracing my inner eight-year-old in the oh, last couple yes. years. And so I'm all about rainbows and little golden books. Right. And, and I, you can't see it, but that back shelf, that's all toys. Oh, so, and my strawberries. I love that. I feel oh. like for me, I identify with that because I, I just turned 55 last week. And, <laughs> Happy um, birthday. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I am getting more into color um, yeah. because I've always been a black navy blue gray night especially like in my clothing like even right now yeah um, <laughs> but you got that pop of mustard so. that's right but i'm trying i'm trying to embrace a little bit more color maybe my own rainbow like totally mm -hmm. so i get that so the opposite side then so what's your least favorite word oh my goodness i am not sure haven't really ever thought about it because because with the previous one, rainbow just popped right into my head. Right. You know? Um, well, if it helps, my least favorite words are like body words. You know, like oh, yeah. bizarre. <laughs> 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 Stuff like that. Like, I just don't like those words so much. Like, I, <laughs> you know, okay, so I won't say it, but my least favorite <laughs> words are actually some, well, of course I wouldn't say it because it's a swear word. <laughs> There are some swear words that I use like like nobody's business. Yes. But there's one four-letter word that I absolutely makes you like, cringe. It makes me cringe. Like mm -hmm. I just can't. Right. Right. Can't. So there I'm you sure go. We can all probably guess which one that is. So <laughs> yeah. I'm sure there are a lot of us in that same yes. boat with you. So okay. So what turns you on creatively 
or spiritually or emotionally, like, and, and take whichever one you like, but what gets you like excited? Oh, um, color, oh. um, music. I am a musician, a lifelong musician. Yeah. Um, I am uh, trying new things. Aww. I am, I call myself multi-passionate. Um, I suspect there's some undiagnosed ADHD, you know, like, like a lot of us as we're in menopause going, what's going on with me? But this is like lifelong, like the whole right. moving from thing to thing. I want to try and learn new things. And so, mm -hmm. um, I just, just feel that multi-passionate because I definitely identify with that. Yeah. I feel I am that. I am multi-passionate for sure. I love that word. I I started off thinking I wanted to be a music teacher and I thought I was passionate about music. And I went to Ithaca College and I discovered that I had no idea what it meant to be passionate about music. Oh. These people were laser focused. And I'm like, you guys, that's kind of boring. Right. <laughs> I, mean, I love you, but right, right. I want, I want everything. I, mm -hmm. you know, and, and luckily I raised or, or was lucky enough to have children who are also very curious. And so yeah. I, I'm looking forward to encouraging that with my, with my grandson too. And so that's one of the things that really right now is, I mean, he's too young for anything more than cuddles yet, Right. Um, but, but just thinking about sticking a crayon in his hand or, I went to Target and they had a pink unicorn book and I'm like, oh my God, I have to have this pink unicorn book for Maverick. <laughs> and, and that kind of goes back to our very first part of our conversation mm -hmm. about what, how do we talk about and how do we encourage? And mm -hmm. my hope as his grandma is to nurture that inner artist, mm -hmm. whatever it may look like, and to make sure he knows that little boys can like bright pink. Right. Because they might like bright blue, you know? Oh, exactly. I think that, you know, I was thinking about our four kids and creativity recently, and I didn't do it on purpose. Um, but all four of our children have creative passions and endeavors. Mm -hmm. And I guess it makes sense. Yeah. Um, and I just kind of wonder had I been just as it's not that I wasn't deliberate. I was just being myself. Um, just, I, there was a just. Right, right. I was being myself. But, but you were being yourself. Yep, and I was being yeah. myself. And I wonder what it would have been like had I been even a bit more intentional, especially with, you know, perhaps bringing my boys along into fiber art mm -hmm. or, you know, bringing the girls along into working on my machines, Dance like yeah. bandsaws and things like yeah. that. So I, I, I ponder sure. if I didn't unintent unintentionally <laughs> gender separate them yeah. in some kind of way. So it's just something really interesting to think about. And when they come home to the farm, I am always thinking about ways that they can join me because nothing mm -hmm. makes me happier than crafting with my kids. So, but anyway, what what turns you off? Oh, like in general. Or yeah, or just yeah. Like, like you're just like I have no time for that. That's nonsense. Oh, drama, right? Um, I, I am who I am, and mm -hmm. I am going to show you who I am. And I don't know how to play politics. Right. I don't do that. And so, if you are going to, you know, like like so, there's all those jokes about. Um, using certain words in emails means something else. And oh, a lot of times the words that they're saying mean something else. I'm like, no, I meant it when I said that. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> right. <laughs> when you get an email from me and I am telling you how excited I am, or I can't even right. think of an example right now. I truly mean it. I really want you to feel a certain way. And I'm going to tell you that. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and in my personal relationships, for, for good or for ill, I don't know how to, to do the politics. And so if I tell you I want to do this thing, I meant it. If right. I tell you, I, you well, know? It sounds like you're not like a game player. Like no. you're not a positioner. I'm even. not. And I, I don't even, I mean, I, I, I have had an experience with someone who was um, a narcissist. 
-hmm. And, but I was one of the people that he had a normal relationship with. Oh, but with others, not so but much. With others, he right. was inappropriate. And so I, it, that has really changed how I look at how I interact with people. I bet. I and, bet. and it's the, so that's, yeah, don't. What a teachable, what a teachable moment that was, I bet. Yes. I would rather have not learned that lesson. Right. <laughs> I mean, well, <laughs> right. I bet. I bet. I bet. Right. So, Thinking of that, perhaps. Um, so you said you use this word a lot. <laughs> you don't have to say it if you don't want to. You can just tell us what it starts with. But you should just know that my family surname, no, I'm not even kidding, is Sailor. Like it is. Like oh. my family. <laughs> In, in my lineage, um, I have a grandma sailor. And so oh. just know that whatever you say, you are in good company. Yes. I, mean, I sound sweet, but I got a mouth on me. Yes. <laughs> so so here's the funny thing about cuss, curse words. Yes. I worked at a school, right? Oh, and sure. In school, you don't want the kids swearing. Right. And so we're constantly telling the kids not to swear. Right. And what, what we as the adults in the building figured out was that a lot of those kids didn't even realize that they were using a oh, curse word sure. because it's just so natural to yes. them. So so the, the, the sneaky secret bit is <laughs> that as soon as the doors are closed and it's just the adults. <laughs> You're on the microphone. <laughs> absolutely foul mouthed the, right. the f bombs the shit and damn and all of it is like <laughs> we're we're using the f word like like every part of the the oh, grammar yeah. you can oh yeah you know? it could be it could be it's an adjective yeah, word. <laughs> yeah you this that yes. me. Right. oh yeah <laughs> so so that's why it's just so ironic <laughs> no, we're telling the kids not to swear, but yet we're swearing up a storm behind doors. So, so is that is that one your favorite? It, it probably is because it's so versatile. So many, yeah, it is versatile. There's so many uses for it. But the real I, I'm, around the house, though, my husband doesn't swear. Yeah. And so <laughs> we don't really in my day-to-day -day life, I'm not using them out loud anymore oh. like I used to. It's mostly in my head. Oh, um, interesting. So, so the times when he does swear, I got a text one time with from him with the F-bomb. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> So, well, for people who don't, when they use it, you know. You know, you know yes. Like, uh, like my husband doesn't swear in front of our children. He's got like a split personality. Yeah. So when he's like really being himself but with me, like, oh, yeah, all the colors of the rainbow yeah. so, <laughs> in front of our kids, he doesn't. And so they don't really have memories of hearing him they up oh, to curse. And right. so when I say he did, they don't believe me. And I'm like, he does. He, he does. really does. Like, well, all it's, the it's, time. It's also entertaining when my children use a curse word now because oh, we didn't God. swear around them. And so they'll they'll say it and then they'll look at us like <laughs> whoops. I'm like, it's okay. You're allowed right. to use those words. Well, I always tell my kids that it's just like you guys just know your audience, right? Yes. Like, oh, don't absolutely. Do it, don't do it in front of your padre. He doesn't really like it. It makes yes. his skin crawl a little bit. But like in front of each other, well, goodness sakes, we know how you talk. We yeah. oh, gosh, anyway. Yeah. So, okay. So what sound or noise do you love? I have a good guess, but I can't wait for your answer. Oh, right now, my favorite sound is any sound that comes out of the mouth of my grandson. I knew it. I was going <laughs> to say <laughs> It must be a giggle or a coo or a oh, or he he tries to you know you blow on raspberries. Oh, sure, he, the best. And right now he's actually even um, you know he's getting into the almost into the giving kisses, Aww. but he put his mouth open mouth juicy. <laughs> but I could feel him trying to buzz a raspberry, <laughs> and so yes, any sound that comes out of him is. Aww. Well, maybe not the bottom sounds, but right, the right. I gotcha. I gotcha. Yes. We we are not grandparents, and we're probably like a ways away from it. But I sure do love hearing about it because it it oh, sounds it's kind of awesome. So great. And that's what I, I heard. I, you know, I've seen the. I don't know. You've probably seen the thing about. Um, it's not that we love our grandkids more than we love our kids. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get teary about it. It's, <laughs> that, it's that we get to love our kids again. 
right through our grandkids because Aww. I don't remember I had twin boys that first right. year or so you were very busy I right. was, I have no memory of many things from that first sure. year. And so getting to re-experience it through Maverick is just Aww. really, really special. So our kids are 20 to 26 and mm. they're not, this, nobody is at that stage of life yet. So yeah. um, I probably, I mean, we had bets, <laughs> we had <laughs> wagers going as a family, like who would be first. And uh <laughs> And now that he's out of high school, um, I don't care. But <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> he knows who he is. Anyway. <laughs> but when that day comes, I know it'll be very exciting and very yes. wonderful. So okay, opposite side of that then. What sound or noise do you hate? I am very sensitive to sounds. Mm -hmm. So too. so to list them would be really hard. Um Same. I I have um, tinnitus, mm -hmm. very loud. It's particularly loud in my left ear. And so I spend a lot of time trying not to listen to that. Um, anything, I, I just repetitive noises bother me. Um, we at school one time, there was, we had, you know, those fluorescent lights was making a sound. Mm -hmm. And I, I hear it, I bet, really loud. I, hear it really loud and I would complain and people would come in and they'd be like, well, I don't what? hear anything. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to die if you don't stop it from making that sound. So it's just, you know. <laughs> you and I have so much in common. For me, it's my, if my kids have on the typing function in their phones. Oh, I, yes. I lose yeah. it. I lose it. Or, or if they have the typing function and they're listening to like social media streams and the car radio is on, I'm just like, I, my head is going to pop yeah, right on my shoulders. I also, <laughs> I also struggle with um, eating, eating sounds sometimes, yeah. but um, yeah. Common. Common. <laughs> Classic. Yes. So what? And, and the cats. My cats oh. are start licking themselves. It's like, oh, come on. <laughs> Repetitive, right? I get yes. it. Yes. So what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Because like, you like to try things and you like to yes. dabble. So I would love to be a librarian. Oh, I could see that. I, could I see that. And I know it's kind of related, but I, yeah. I have actually considered going to school to get a library certificate or, you mm. know, a degree or whatever. Um, and in fact, my very first job out of high school, I was, we called it a, I was a library page sure. and all I did was shelf books. And it's probably one of my favorite, most favorite jobs. <laughs> so. So it might surprise you, but my oldest son, uh, who is 25, has talked a lot of his life about being in library sciences. Mm, um, yes. He loves books so much that he just wants to surround himself with yes. them and be with them all the time. What we can, what we've discovered is that there aren't as many librarians as there used to be um, because of the way our right. lives are changing, but super, super interesting. Yeah. So is there a profession then that you would not like? I mean, I have a long list. <laughs> oh, my, my list is pretty long. Anything yes. food service? Oh, yeah. anything healthcare related? Yeah. Um, I am very introverted and, um, I, and so to have been a school secretary for as long as I was, I, the main reason I quit was because of the people. And so you anything, so tired at the end of the I day, was, it was exhausting and it right. was always, and it wasn't even the kids, no, just people. The parents. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and so anything that would have to do with, I mean, I have to do customer service, obviously with my right. job now, but it's a, but it's not just random people. It's it's a specific group of people, and they've all been so lovely. Um, um, so so that's not an issue. Um, but anything like retail, I just wouldn't. I would be. Those are although, really. Although I do think about going to work at Michaels just to help pay for the art supplies. So. <laughs> I've been thinking about, this is going to sound so selfish and I'm so embarrassed to even admit this, but I was thinking, this is so bad. I shouldn't even say it out loud, but here it is. <laughs> I was thinking about volunteering at one of our local thrift shops um, to be a person who goes through the donations so mm. that I could see them first. Yes. 
<laughs> and like make my little pile of purchases. Yes. So terribly self-serving. Like, yes. oh gosh, <laughs> sounds good to me. I have like, a friend. I want to go through the junk first, and I can't <laughs> pay for it. But yeah. like, I want. <laughs> I have a friend who volunteered at like um at like the library, you know, the yeah. oh, like the book sale kind of a thing. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And I Same think reason. that's part of why she was there was to yeah. check the books out first. Yeah. So like they're they're seeking volunteers and I'm just like I I hope yeah, yeah, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so final question. If there's an afterlife, what would you like to hear the welcome party say when you arrive? The art supplies are over there. To your right. <laughs> to your right. Um, and here are all of your pets. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, my gosh. Suzanne, this has been one of, like, my most favorite Happy Time Craft Cast. Thank oh, you thank so you. so much for being here. And let's just, before we say goodbye, let's just quickly remind people, one, this amazing download on pens, black pens, and mark making is available in the show notes and Suzanne has prepared it to share with all of you. So that's an easy thing that you should grab. Um, another thing is if you are not, um, if you haven't gotten into the pre-order for issue number seven of Strawberry Moon Magazine, they can do that today, right? Yes. It just opened today okay. at my website, which is strawberrymoon.art slash shop. Um, it's under current issues. And I think there will be a link in the show notes for that. Yep, so. There sure will. Yep. And so, and do, can you just clarify too, we have a, a comment here about, do you, can people subscribe so that they get every strawberry moon or do you get them sure. one at a time? Um, I do have a subscription option okay. that um, is, uh, you can start with issue seven. So it'll, and, and actually I still have the start with issue six up and it's okay. for four, it's for four issues. I don't call it like a, it's not like a year or anything. Right. Because they come out, right. They come out when they come out. I, <laughs> want to write, well, I mean, it's just, it is just me and my cats and my cats are completely useless. So, um, and I do have family and I do have mental health struggles sometimes. Sure. So, and my, you know, I, my, and the way my interest cycles, I just do the best I can. And everybody's also been very lovely and patient. Well, about and that. I think that's fair. And I oh, and there so, are yeah. more really great comments for you that I want you to hear. Like Brittany says, she loves the magazine. Terry loved the magazine and she got here from uh, your email. Oh, um, wonderful. Lots and lots of people love it. So that's great. I, I can't say enough about how much I love being a part of it. And I'm so grateful that you were able to come on and be my guest today. Yes, and thank I'm, you so much for inviting me. You're so welcome. I feel like we're <laughs> friends for life. And I will be sure to make sure you all are able to get to Strawberry Moon from the links in the show notes. And I will make sure you're able to find all the great things that are happening here at Big Raven Farm. And thank you so much for being on the Happy Time Craftcast, everyone. Join me next week, actually. Special uh, mid, mid edition <laughs> where my guest will be Lisa M. Bolt Simons. Lisa is an author. Um, an educator and a speaker, and she is going to be on the pod next week talking about shadows and sunlight and how we can use um, art, writing, and journaling to help navigate through grief. So a little different spin for us, but it'll be an amazing show. I hope you'll join us then. Thank you, Suzanne. All right, everybody, have a great day, and thanks for being here. Bye. Thank you. Bye.